These are oleander aphids. Oleander aphids um, actually were brought over by accident on, uh, on oleander plants. And when they got over here, uh, it turns out that milkweeds have very similar chemical properties, so they were able to switch hosts and now feed on, on milkweeds. Um, the problem is, though, they do also uh, basically get some of the milkweed uh, toxins as well as what they contain. And they have these warning colors. Again, they're this bright color to kind of warn things that they don't taste good. But a lot of things won't eat them. And so they can become a kind of big garden pests because once they get on there, they like to feed on the new growth uh, right near the flowers you can see on here. And what ends up happening is they oftentimes will stunt the growth to prevent either the seed formation or flower formation itself. Um, aphids, including oleander aphids, produce mostly wingless ones. And then they don't, they don't need to mate. They actually all are... And they're, they're all females and they reproduce uh, by live birth okay and um, that's something that's kind of interesting because they, they can just keep one aphid can end up into being a lot doesn't need to mate then the last generation ends up being or one of the generations then has wings on it those wing generations then find new plants and are able to mate normally and find brand new hosts but um and you can control them washing them off with a strong stream of water they're very soft bodied things insecticidal soap maybe uh, even rubbing them off some people claim that the little crushed bodies give off pheromones that warn other uh, if it's not to come near here and there are, there are wasps and even a few dragonfly a few ladybugs although not a lot of them that will feed on them um, but they can be tended by ants so they can be protected and uh, they sometimes can be in huge numbers so that uh, these are oleander aphids